Um, is the committee ready? <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So is uh, so let's call the meeting to order. This is a meeting of the Committee of Budget and Fiscal Oversight. Uh, the, the purpose of the meeting is to um, is to uh, review input from the councilors and make recommendations to the town council on the fiscal year 2022 budget policy guidelines. Um, before we begin where we left off uh, from last week, um, I just want to let everyone know that this is a working session, not a public hearing. Uh, we still have uh, three pages to go through our, our worksheet from last week. Um, we thought we would get through it all last week, but that didn't happen. Um, we do want to try to keep up, um, keep this moving. So I'm just asking everyone who speaks to be brief and stay on point. Uh, there's. I would like to make just before we begin, I'd um, like to make uh, two comments. The first is, uh, you know, there was some confusion uh, last week. Um, I, I re really want to reiterate that the purpose of this document that we're editing is direction from the town council to the town manager to develop budgetary goals and the town budget for fiscal year 22 and is not intended to set the town council's legislative agenda. These meetings are to edit a document based on input submitted by councilors. It is not to develop new priorities or set policy. So that's the first thing. The second thing is I'm just, um, the meeting went on way too long last week uh, and, and I would like to remind everyone of the basic rules for meetings. Uh, if you wanna speak, raise your hand and wait to be recognized. Please be respectful in your comments. And uh, please do not interrupt somebody else when they're speaking. Uh, I do want to acknowledge that, that we received an email on November 2nd from Mary Russo, a former Watertown High School teacher, which included the following comment, quote, I applaud those students for being involved. They need to be encouraged and applauded. These meetings should be a safe place for everyone to have an opinion without being told you are wrong and this is not the time to ask questions. So um, anyway, so that's just a uh, basic intro. And uh, what I would like to do is pick up uh, where we left off. Uh, last time we left off on uh, new item number one. The, I do wanna say that uh, you know, we, we will continue like we did the last time. Items will be taken up in the order they appear in the worksheet. Um, I will read the items. Uh, then I'll open the discussion among committee members. <coughs> I'll ask for comments from uh, staff. Then I'll ask for comments from other counselors who may be in attendance. Then I will ask for comments from members of the public in attendance. If you wanna speak, use the raise your hand button and wait to be recognized, state your name and address. Please stay on topic and speak to the point under discussion and um, keep your comments brief. Once that's done, we will uh, come back to the committee, we'll discuss it further and we'll take a roll call vote on that item. So um, that's where we are. I did, um, I did have uh, the council clerk attach the document to the, um, to the agenda so you can follow along at home. Uh, would people like me to share the screen? Oh, I'm sorry, I see Councillor Canellis has her hand up. So go ahead, Councillor Canellis. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. I'd like to uh, piggyback for a moment on your opening statement. Uh, yes, there were statements made last week at the meeting. I won't uh, prolong the comment but um, I think it's, as I indicated last week, it's totally inappropriate when someone blurts out that someone else's statement is, uh, is not correct. Everyone's opinion is valid. And I think the subject matter that we were actually discussing was an existing um, point within the document that we are reviewing. So I am certainly in good company 
because the document was unanimously voted by the town council. So if I'm incorrect in my statement, so is every one of my colleagues. So I, I'm here not only to support myself, but to support the sitting town council that should be respected. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Councilor Knells. Um, okay, so uh, would uh, the committee like me to share my screen? If we could do that. Um, I think maybe that would be helpful. Let's, um, when I share my screen, I actually can't see, I'm, I'm gonna ask people perhaps not to use the, the chat feature if, if you wanna speak. Um, it would be better if you raised your hand. Um, it's just, I can't see the chat while I've got my screen shared, but I will ask Councilor Donato perhaps to uh, keep an eye on that just in case. And if somebody does, uh, you could just read, uh, read it. So, uh, so if you just, everyone bears with me for a moment. Um, if we can see that. Um, I need to, do that so I can see whose hand is raised. Um, and just bear with me, it's just, I'm trying to run the meeting and take notes and follow along with um, the sharing of the screen. So there's a lot going on here. So, okay, are we all set? Committee yes. members, you all set? Yes. Um, okay, so we left off uh, new item number one. Um, was submitted by Councilor Palumba. It says hire a recycling coordinator in the Public Works Department as recommended by the department in its budget request to the town manager for fiscal year 21. So um, as, as noted, um, move this window away from what? Um, as, so uh, this is already included in two, item 2C two above. Um, it was noted in the, uh, because of the impact of COVID-19 on the town's budget, funding for this new position is requested by the DPW was not included in the fiscal year 21 budget, um, even though that it was presented as a, as a proposed uh, addition. So I think, um, I think that it's, uh, since this is already redundant with item 2C, uh, it would be my feeling that we don't, don't add this as a, as a separate and distinct item. Um, so uh, that's my thoughts, uh, Councilor Canellis. I agree. I, I don't feel that we are in a position at this point in time to be considering um, additional hires. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Donato. I, I agree with uh, comments made both by uh, you, Councilor Picciarelli, as well as Councilor Cunella. So I would not be in favor of adding this. Okay. Okay. Um, Mr. Manager, did you have any comments? I know, sir. Okay. Uh, any other counselors want to speak to this point? Uh, Kenny. Hey, uh, could you just comment a little bit, Vinny, about um, the process that we go through here? We indicate to counselors um, that these are overall policy um, and not very specific hiring mandates. Um, the, whether or not this was included in 2C, it's probably important to note to folks in the room that this wouldn't be something that's suitable for this document anyway, because we set the overall general policy and it's up to the manager to implement that policy within the framework of our budget and other constraints. Um, so. I, if you don't mind, Vinny, taking a second to just confirm that my thinking is correct, that 
this document is not here to say it's good to hire someone or bad to hire someone, but the specific hiring of, of a specific position is not within the purview of the council. So that's a great, uh, great point. Uh, and just, uh, just so peop uh, people uh, in the audience know, um, Kenny Woodland was on this committee for, for quite a number of years. What we don't, so hiring is entirely within the uh, responsibility of the town manager. Uh, what we do is, and if you look at all the other budget po policy guidelines, with a few exceptions, like uh, hiring the town, the deputy town manager, what all our, our guidelines are, are talks about what additional services we would like to achieve, and we leave it up to the, the manager and his staff to figure out exactly how to, uh, to do that, whether a person needs to be hired, whether... Uh, tasks can be reassigned within the department and given to somebody else, or whether we hire a consultant or whether we do however we, we want to do it. So, so we did put this in and for example, well, last year we updated 2C to say, uh, comply with the Mass DEP 2030 solid waste management plan. So that basically we put that in because there was a lot of questions about uh, expanding our ability to um, to do recycling, so that got put in there. And then the manager uh, submitted, as you recall, uh, with the fiscal year 21 budget, a, a, uh, a request for hiring additional personnel, which was a part-time position, which actually was not funded because of the, the COVID-19 budget impact. So that's that's really the process. We, we, we don't, we shy away from just uh, saying hire person X or hiring person Y because, um, Hiring a person may not be the right way to do it. There may be some other way to do it. So, so that's just sort of the process to that. Uh, so I see Caroline Bays has her hand up. Caroline? Yeah, so my, so my question is, I, I understand that and I totally, I mean, I actually agree with Kenny on this, but if we, but we do set priorities. So if we want recycling and we need the expert like we need the expertise for how to do the recycling there because we do want, you know, all kinds of different kinds of recycling, organic recycling and all these things. How do you phrase that as a, as a budget item request? And what, you know, I mean, I, I heard what you said, but it feels to me like it's a little more than what you, what you have in, in the other item. Cause you need that. Cause we want like a full, you know, someone who's, we need the DPW to have the manpower and the wherewithal to do a full look at all of recycling. So how would you phrase that? Um, well, first of all, so I, well, first of all, I agree, which is why we, we changed this 2C last year to add specifically uh, talk about complying with the uh, 2030 solid waste management plan. Uh, and the manager, you know, to his credit, actually, is, we, we got the supplemental uh, budget requests that were put in, um, you know, in the fiscal year 21 budget. Um, there was actually quite a few positions that were added in the this proposed to be added in the fiscal year 21 budget. It just wasn't funded because at that time we had to cut $4 million out of the budget. So. So it's in my so that's why I, I think it's redundant. You know, we don't need to take every guideline and, and break it down into um, individual pieces. There's a lot of other things in there that, in my mind, it, it's already been done. And certainly, if the council wants to talk to uh, something that was included in the budget as a proposal but not funded, you know, well, that's sort of a. a so, so actually, that's not really my question because my question isn't even about this particular one and my question is more of an overarching question and like when you have something like that where you want something done and sort of the obvious thing to do might be just to hire somebody or whatever but you but you know that town council wants something done how would you frame it differently I, I'm doing I'm, I'm asking for future years you know how do I frame things differently so that you're not saying hire somebody but you know that you want a, some sort of policy followed or some sort of expertise that's needed 
So I don't know, maybe uh, Mr. Driscoll could speak a little bit to that, how how he takes. So, so for example, Two Street, we talked about uh, complying with Mass DP solid waste plan, maintain complete streets infrastructure. So that, that was also another position that was proposed in the DPW budget. So, um, you, you know, and there's different ways, like I said, there's different ways that the manager may, may choose to, to do it. Uh, it gets, uh, everybody here knows that things go in the, on this list and it may take two, three, four years before they actually turn into a, a something, uh, an amount in the budget. Um, but in the meantime, you know, we just can continue to follow up with the manager on, on, on advocating that something gets moved, moved forward or actually gets funded uh, in, in the budget. So I, I would, but I would like to maybe turn it over to Mr. Mr. Driscoll to explain a little bit about his, his thoughts about, um, about that specific question. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Chair, if I may please. Oh, sorry. Um, um, I, may I suggest that folks who are not speaking turn off their microphones? I'm hearing background noise. Oh yes, that would be good, thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. Uh, if you want to speak, you need to unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah. I, again, Mr. Chairman, members of the uh, committee, I, I, I would kind of perhaps speak for the for the folks uh, participating tonight to uh, just without getting at the policy question that Council Woodland raised. I, I, I just think we need to, when this discussion about a particular position as is item number, the new number one, just for perspective, I just want to make sure folks know that the, and we submitted this to council in advance of them, uh, con considering the fiscal year 2021 budget that was submitted on June 8th, that there was 16 and a half positions requested by various town departments and only two and a half of them were recommended for funding. Two in the uh, IT department, which is kind of moving forward with the, uh, the IT assessment that was a council uh, prerogative, uh, policy uh, guidance on moving forward with that. And then there was a half time local historian library that librarian that was only costing $14,000 because we already had $21,000 from the year before from a, from a, from a previous uh, part-time position. So one of the things that we forwarded, just to give everyone a perspective, because I do want to get to the policy issue in a minute, there was $1.8 million requested by all town departments, and that was uh, included in there with the 16 and a half positions, plus some supplies and services. Plus there was another million 26,180 that the uh, superintendent of schools had cut or reduce from her original submitted budget. So that $2.8 million that was above and beyond, if you will, a level service dollar amount, only a little over $500,000 was funded. So $2.3 million wasn't funded. Uh, a lot of it predominantly was related to COVID. There were other reasons, but so I just wanna give the broad perspective to everyone at home that a lot of these things, when, when a department asked for a, uh, a new funding position, clearly the one thing that we would look at is it, uh, is it related to a budget policy guideline, uh, even if it is, and given particularly with the fiscal year 2021 budget that um, uh, Council Pizzarelli alluded to that we had to reduce it by $4 million, we would certainly look at that, but on a broad policy guidance, I think one of the things that Council has done before is look to continue enhancing the capabilities of the community development planning. And it could be either additional resources or redeploying uh, resources from elsewhere in the budget. So I, I would think, you know, I, I'm not gonna, you know, speak to uh, council base specific how to write the thing is moving forward, but it is kind of broad policy guidance. I, I think it's important to point out the how many positions were asked for and how very few were included in the fiscal year 21 budget. But rest assured when we asked the council, the department heads to bring forward 
uh, any additional funding requests they'd like to consider. We always point out few, very few or, or, or any of them are gonna be considered uh, given all the various things we're trying to do, but it, it certainly would be, uh, it needs to be uh, something that the council has been looking for from a broad budget policy guideline. But again, uh, Mr. Pre uh, Mr. Vice President, I'm a little uncomfortable, you know, suggesting how to write something up for budget policy guidelines is ultimately coming back to me, so. Uh, I see uh, Council Woodland had his hand up and then Councilor Donato and then Councilor Bays. And Mr. Chair, I'm also, oh. I also have my hand up. Oh, sorry, okay, sorry, I didn't, I didn't see you. Go ahead, uh, Ken. Yep. Uh, I think the town manager hit the nail on the head. Um, you can steal the language from the previous ones that have been approved. The ones that start with enhance the capability are usually a good place to start. And that's just in drafting this. Um, and traditionally, even though that language seems broad, the public should be aware that most of the time when these go on the budget priority guidelines, it's because the committee on the committee level has made a recommendation and studied this topic pretty extensively and the council has already endorsed a certain position. Um, so in this case, it could be, the committees are meeting about it right now, actually, about different um, you know, composting and things like that. But if it came out, usually we'd be able to point to and say, hey, the committees over the past two years have met about this issue and we are looking to accomplish objectives A, B, and C, and the DPW has indicated they could accomplish those objectives with an additional position. That's when it would be included in a document like this and it would use that broad language, but the manager would have specific language um, and, and presumably council endorse guidance on moving forward with those initiatives. So that's how it traditionally works. Okay, thanks, Ken. Uh, Anthony? Thank you, Council Picciarelli. I was pretty much going to say what Kenny just said. Um, and I, I'm sure that comment is going to come up in response to the new item I suggested in that historically, um, when I've attended these uh, committee meetings in the past as a regular counselor, the thing I heard over and over again that I found to be really important is that budget and finance is looking for items that the full council has already weighed in on. So issues that have been referred to committee, been studied, uh, committee comes out with a recommendation that the council subsequently comes up with endorses, and then it's brought forward to this committee to uh, appear on the budget priority guidelines. So I expect to hear that uh, several times in this meeting tonight, again, specifically with request to, uh, with regard to my request. So just to echo a little bit of what a council would have said. Okay, good. Uh, okay, so uh, 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 Council Gannon. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, as, a, as a first year counselor, um, I'm still a little confused about the process. So I'm learning that um, things may sit on the budget guidelines for four more years. They're just a dumping ground for ideas, but truly there are, you know, urgencies. There are policy development that has to take place. We've got a whole lot of energized people um, um, on, on the Zoom call with us. And um, I think we, we need to step back a little bit and, and figure out where we're going in terms of developing policy. So. I didn't see anywhere that the budget uh, policy guideline called for expenditures for lining up people to those who choose to get vaccinated for COVID. Um, if the public health department is going to set up, if the John, 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 we, we need to stay. Please, uh, we need to stay focused on on these no, items. This, is, this so. is focused. I, I beg to differ, Mr. Chair. So um, we have a lot of people energized about policy development but we're told that the manager won't spend unless it's on this guideline. Uh, where does policy development arise? How does it become a policy which eventually becomes on this policy guideline? It looks like where any new idea would have to wait at least a year before the, it ends up on a, another fiscal policy guideline. So I'm, I'm just trying to get a sense of policy development and the process for getting funding for those policies. Obviously the, the manager looks to us for direction as to policy. So I'm just asking where that policy development, how does it arise? 
So I just like like I like I said in my opening comments, this um this committee does is not developing policy. That's, that's not what I learned. learned. That's why I want to what we do. The audience yeah. want to know as well in addition yeah. to me. So so the legislative you know, the legislative body, the town council, sets its own priorities. And we do that by making motions, referring things to committees, um, doing a whole bunch of other things. Th this is really policy guidance to the manager about what's important as he's creating the fiscal year 22 operating budget. There's many things that um, um, you know are legislative in nature that sort of, if you recall, um, the discussion last uh, meeting about the uh, title transfer task tax um, that really has nothing to do with the operating budget and nothing to do with the executive branch. That's solely a Did he just freeze? He froze. It's happened a couple times last week. So I'm sure he's going to. I'm sure Vinny's going to reboot and get back on. Legislative off. initiative. Okay. Yeah. Um, the other. Well, there he goes. Okay, sorry. Uh, decides. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the committee decides what to do, develops a policy, and then and votes, and then asks the manager to do something. Uh, sometimes, you know, I would split policy into things that cost money and things that don't cost money. Many of the policy decisions we make are, are things that actually, you know, are, don't require a specific appropriation. Sometimes it does. Um, but that's, that's generally how it, um, how it comes to be. The things that end up on this list, by and large, are things that require uh, annual, you know, and, and add on to the, the annual budget, you know, hiring a new, new person. You know, once we hire a new person, that's not a one-time expense. That's something we will pay, you know, for as long as that person works. And then after they leave, we'll continue to pay, you know, their pension costs. So, you know, we, we have to be very careful about um, the sustainability. Oh, and I'm not talking just personnel hires, um, just to step back. Um, yeah. just, so. But anything, so 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 things. So this is you know this is the way because we, we identify things, things that have already been identified from a policy decision somewhere else, um, and you know typically from a committee report. Um, but I think a lot of folks are, who are advocating for different policies would want to know where to go next if this committee isn't the right place for them to advocate for their policy decisions. How do members of the public and frankly, members of the council, um, how does that process develop on the town council? And it's, and it's a very much related to this, this, the, um, this committee meeting. Well, uh, not, you know, not to belabor the point, but, but and each of the nine of us, you know, can bring forward something, you know, as we, you know, as, as the need arises, um, that's typically how, how it works. So, um, you know, it, the initiatives come from the counselors. So we need to, to take that up and to a certain point, um, you know, the, so, you know, the, the count, you know, citizens bring it, bring it to individual counselors. And I, you know, I'll go back to the, you know, we talked earlier on, I know it was a topic of hot discussion about the climate and energy plan. You know, that came up through a group of concerned citizens, brought it to some of the counselors, and I ended, ended up referring it to the committee, um, joint committee, public works, and economic development planning. And we worked with citizens groups um, for a year to develop a 100% renewable energy resolution, which then came back to the council that the council voted on. And one of the action items in that resolution was to, uh, to do a climate and energy master plan, which then you saw came back on this list is a request to fund, which the manager then put in the budget, which we voted on just uh, last month. So that's sort of the, the how the, the policy issue came from citizens to counselors. The counselors worked for a year, developed a policy that went back uh, into the budget policy guidelines and then it got funded and, you know, 
off, off we go. We'll be, we'll be developing that plan with input from the public. So that's, that's typically how the, the legislative process works. Um, okay. And again, the, 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 with this I form know, of government. I know how the legislative process works. I, I yeah. guess I'm trying to understand the purpose of this committee because when I was town attorney for the town for five years, um, some time ago, all, all the members, there was no gatekeeping function like this committee seems to serve. Uh, every member of the council was a member of the budget committee as a committee as a whole. And each member's input wasn't pre-screened by a three member committee. So I'm just trying to figure out how the current process works, so. Well, we're not pre-screening it. So everybody who, everything that everybody submitted is in this list. Our yeah, goal- our, our, for it. We have a nine member body. That's, I guess right. that's- Well, my well it's, so, so this committee is to try to edit input from nine people into a single actionable document. And but three people are voting yes or no on the other six members, you know, policy concerns. So well, that's why, that's the confusion I have. Well, this is why you know everybody's here to, to, to participate and discuss, and it's just you know it, it just you know there's a, the balance between um, and again I don't want to go back to the, the old days when you know there was no process and everybody it was just uh, every you know people were working across purposes sometimes um, you know what we've seen in the last ten years we've refined this process where. Um, we actually get a really good actionable document that uh, allows the manager actually to put together plans to actually fund a lot of these positions. And I, and I think the, the proof is in the pudding. If you look at what we've been able to achieve over the last 10 years, it's been a very efficient process to sort of... Um, oh, and I'm, I'm very aware of the, the financial um, um, expertise that uh, the manager and other folks show. Um, it, it's just that question of they're not going to, the manager and his team aren't going to find resources to bring unless we, uh, as a council, identify what those priorities are. And yep. it generally has been, well, back in my, my day, it had been all nine members serving as a screening process for, versus a three member committee, then, a, then what's left, what's approved by the, the three members goes before the other six members. Uh, to approve the budget. So I'm, like I said, I, I write it off to, I'm learning the process as it is now. I somehow question how policy develops in this town. So, um, and there are a lot of forward thinking proposals that were brought by members of the public that um, looks like they won't see the light of the day in this, this meeting, but that's why I'm trying to give it, get a sense of, you know, rather than just saying no, 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 to some, you know, interesting policy um, ideas that Watertown can be a, a forward-looking town. Um, okay. That's what I'm trying to draw. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I'm gonna. Uh, you know, we're, no, we're, getting, we're getting. I do have a question, though. Okay. Hold on. Hold on a second. We're getting a little off track. So, so I, 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 I you know, I've said it before. We are not deciding what's a good idea, what's a bad idea. Our job is just to edit this into an actionable document. We not so this take this point here. This num, new item number one, the recycling coordinate, it's already in another objective. To see, I, I know I'm not questioning that. The Go manager ahead. has already taken action on that, and worked with the department to identify a position. A I'm cost not questioning point. that particular item. I'm talking in general. Yes. Yeah, so, so it's just you know, and none of the things. Some of the things are just you know. If you go back to the to the you know, my introductory remarks about why something may not, you know, and, and, you know, get to say, well, it needs more policy guidance because if the council hasn't weighed in on what the policy is, then the manager can't figure out what to, how to assign a dollar value to it, or actually even what the, what the council wants, wants to do. So, so that's, that's all this is. You know, you know, there's a lot. Of, there may be a lot of good ideas here, but um, we're not. You know, I, I think it's it's wrong to characterize it as a, they'll never see the light of day. It's just some things need to be worked on more. You know, sometimes it's a germ of an idea, but you can't put the germ of an idea in in a budget. You know, you, there actually needs to be something like that. Anyway, I say Caroline had had a comment. 
Yeah, yeah. so I, no, more of a suggestion is how to move forward on this since, okay, you've got three new, I mean, well, one brand new town councilor, two relatively new town councilors who might have missed how they how they um, wrote their, um, how I wrote my um, policy suggestion. So my question is this, can we, number one, if there's a way to reframe it or rephrase it, can we take a look at it in, from that perspective? Um, you know, like the hire a recycling coordinator could have been, and obviously it's already in, so I'm fine, but enhance the recycling opportunities for residents or something like that. Can we first look at ways to reframe it and rephrase it? And second of all, um, can we, if it hasn't been through committee and it really needs to have more policy guidance from the um, town council, can we say either, you know, needs to be referred to committee or something so that it's clear where it's going to go, you know, that, that there can be some action taken on that item. Yes, yes. And I, and I, and I do say, you know, we do that when every year if you go back and you look at previous year's reports when, you know, typically one of the things we say is, um, you know, one of the, typically one of the things that we say is it needs to be, you know, be referred to committee to develop further policy guidance for the manager. Um, that's, you know, that's, that we, we always, this, this committee always provides a roadmap. Um, and again, this, this particular one, you know, it's, it's in my mind, it's redundant because we already added it to another, last year we added it to another. Yeah, I was just using it as an example. I wasn't saying to do anything. So let's, so, so let's uh, you know, I see Kenny has his hand up. I'd like to hear from Kenny. Uh, uh, thank you. I, I guess sometimes this committee may seem like someone mentioned is a dumping ground because what happens a lot of times is a counselor will make uh, a suggestion in this format and then the committee will say, we can't tell the manager to put this in his budget next year because the council hasn't vetted this issue. How can we tell the manager to fund something and spend money on it if we don't even know what we want or what we haven't discussed whether it's good or not for the town? Um, and then the counselor that made that referral won't follow up and refer it to committee. They'll, it'll just sit there and nothing will happen for a year. And then the next year they'll put it in here again. So that seems to be what happens a lot of the time. It's, it's really straightforward for, uh, if a lot of these recommendations, sometimes the process is different depending on the substance of the issue, but it's traditionally this, a counselor just needs to make a referral to committee. The committee needs to meet and vet the issue. If the issue then involves something that needs to be added in the budget, you come here and make a recommendation. And that's it. Vinny gave a really good example about um, uh, the climate change um, action plans that was brought to referred to committee. The committee vetted it. We said, this is something you, you want to do the next year, added it in the budget priority guidelines. It was funded after. It's that process. Refer it, vet it. Yes. And after it's vetted, put it in this document so that, so the manager knows to fund it. It's yeah. it's probably that four is the simplest way to put this. Okay. Yep. So th this is pro not, what we do here is ninety percent just process. That's 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 all. All right. So um, let's um, let's go and um, see if anybody remembers the public want to speak to this point. Vinny, there are a few comments here in the chat. Okay. Basically, uh, Maddie Rockland and uh, maybe one or two others reiterating the same question, which I, I think we've touched on, but maybe to make it a little clearer, how do members of the public work with town councilors to craft policy to then refer to the appropriate committee to then get it vetted and approved to be in the budget or recommended? To be? Okay, so that's a great question. So, um, so typically, um, so the nine of us, nine council members uh, are elected to represent you. Um, so typically what happens is you come to a counselor and you, you work you work through the, a, a counselor or a number of counselors. Some of these issues, I get calls from you know, half a dozen members of the public. Um, and then that's, once it gets referred to the committee, then uh, the, the committee will hold meetings 
Um, so example, the affordable housing. So that was referred to committee back in 2018. Uh, I want, I believe the human services committee has held almost 20 meetings on that. So the, the key way that policy is crafted is through the committee meetings. And, and like this meeting, this is a committee meeting, uh, we invite members of the public to it and you, you can speak and participate you know, with, with us. You, you don't get to vote of course, but um, that's, that's sort of the way it works. And the, the members of the public provide a lot of good input into to what we're doing. And in fact, you know, that uh, I go back to the climate action, uh, the 100% renewable energy uh, resolution that we did, uh, that, you know, a group of citizens actually wrote a draft of it and, and gave it to our committee. And we, we used that as a starting point and it ended up getting, you know, rewritten. But uh, that, that's the kind of thing, that's the kind of way it happens. Um, by the, and, but again, remember that with this form of government, um, unlike a city with a mayor, where the mayor can, is a person of one can, can sort of do, set his, his or her own priorities. The, the policy decisions here are, are a vote of, of a majority of the nine of us. So, so it really needs to go through that extra step. So uh, the, that, that's really what sort of the, the important piece is. Did you have anybody else in the chat, Anthony? Uh, Leo Martin uh, put a comment in, which I think was maybe addressing um, Caroline's question about how to phrase um, suggestions in general. So specific to new item request one, Leo Martin's uh, comment was the appropriate wording would be to review the operation of the town's recycle program with goals to enhancing its operation. And then he followed up with a note that for that particular idea, it might be better to hire a consultant to the review. The plan. Okay. All right, um, okay, I said, uh, Maddie Rockland, you had your hand up. Did you want to speak also? No, just put it down. Uh, Dave Harrison? Um, yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry Maddie, okay. Um, I'm just wondering, I know, sorry, my internet is a bit unstable, so I might cut out. I don't know. Hmm. Okay, well, go, go ahead, if we can. Looks like she dropped off. Okay, she, she dropped off. Well, if, if you come back. I comment, Vinny, that said, go on. Sorry, bad internet, go on with that. Okay, uh, I see that uh, Dave Harrison has his hand up. Hi, thanks for calling. This is actually Councillor Lisa Feltner. Oh, Lisa. Okay. I, <laughs> it's my husband's computer that I'm having to use to connect. Um, yeah, no, I was just going to say, you know, a lot of questions I feel like the council goes to uh, kind of the policy of how we um, form these budget guidelines. And so I'm hoping that we could have more discussion in the future, partly because um, I, I feel like COVID. Uh, pandemic is pointing out how ideally if we had more flexibility and are able to respond more quickly um, to some things that would be great and and then also as um, you know we want more public participation participation this is not um, the most participatory budget process let's say so um, Anyway, I just want to make that comment. I, I appreciate the work it's doing. It's, it's always a lot of work um, for the committee. And I know that you're, you are diligently trying to take in this, you know, input. Um, but I think it has to go with, uh, you know, maybe council needing to spend more time as a group, perhaps talking about policy um, and, uh, uh, I know, I think President Sedaris has been thinking on and off about uh, ways we can do things, but we always have a full plate. So it's hard to, hard to, um, with part-time council and a full plate, um, you know, to really revamp a lot of things. So anyway, just to let you know that um, I'm connected and- Okay, um, I, changed, I, I changed your name from David to Lisa. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I changed the name so people will know. So I'll know who you are. Oh yeah, I'll just have him change back for, so when he logs into work, it doesn't. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, and, and I do, and I do want to point out. So, so Council Feltner made a good point. This is, you know, the council votes on things that are appropriations all year long. We don't have to wait to a, a suggestion or a recommendation from this committee for a referral. That there's, you know, referrals can be made. Um, any, any time. So, so um, I see Maddie's back on if you want to go ahead and. and um... Yeah, sorry about that. Um, I want to be respectful of everyone's time and thank you for explaining the process earlier. I know you mentioned, um, and sorry, maybe you addressed this while I was offline, but you mentioned the best way would be to work with the town counselor and to come to meetings and work on this long before we end up voting or long before you all end up voting on the budget. Um, so I guess I'm just wondering what the best process is to actually get involved with that ahead of time so that we're not rushing to do it at the end while you all are trying to approve this, this document that has already been pre-vetted by the council. Yeah, it just, at any point, um, and certainly, um, you know, that's perhaps a, a longer discussion, but you know, you know, you obviously you know how to find each of us uh, because you have our email addresses, but you can sort of, you know, bring things up one to one. You can either work through, you know, your district counselor, uh, which would be Lisa Feltner, and, and your point, or you can bring it to somebody like, you know, an at-large counselor. You know, you know, John Gann and Caroline Bays, Anthony Donato. Um, you know, th there's any any number of ways. So just, but you know, you can call us. Our home phone numbers are on the website. You know, you could call, and people call me every day about council issues so the, there's numerous ways you can stay involved don't feel this is don't feel this is the, the one your your one bite at the apple is this meeting so we do policy all year long um all right are we ready okay so anybody else from the public or are we ready to to move on with this one lisa did you have your hand up again or was that left up from the last time Our mic's off, so I'm thinking it was left up from the last time. I can't say. All right, so um, Lisa, did you want to speak again? To, okay, no. All right, so let's. Um, so we've spent uh, 20 minutes on number one. So uh, let's. Um, I will go back to the committee. Um, so the the recommendation is uh, to not add I'm sorry. it. I'm sorry, Vinny. I for some reason it was going back and forth, back and forth. I don't know if you were raising my hand, but just a, just a quick comment. And that is, I think some of the confusion too, is that some of the committee meetings, um, people said, well, you know, we could leave it in and it's easier the full council to take it out than try to put it back in. So I was just gonna say, usually in the budget um, and fiscal oversight committee narrows it down. And, and if you wanna put something back in it, then it comes when the full council goes, but um, yeah. Anyway, that was my last comment. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you. All right, so back to the committee. Um, so the, the recommendation would be not to add this. Uh, Councillor Kunellis, do you have? You're on mute, Angie. You gotta unmute yourself. Thank you. <laughs> Um, are you referring to item two at this point? No, we're still on item one. Um, so item I one- I had spoken and I indicated no on item one. Right, I'm taking the roll call now. Okay. Oh, so, okay, sorry. No. Uh, Council Donato? No. Okay, and myself is no. Okay. So let's move on to number two. Same thing. Um, so number two was from a request from Council of Palumba, increase the Department of Public Works budget for road and sidewalk repair by $1.5 million, given the department's recent success in addressing a greater number of road projects during this Shut year's done. construction season. If, um, if you could mute, if you could mute your microphone, because we're getting crosstalk in the background. So, um, so it's, so it's a couple of things. One, we know that we did um, this summer, we did two years worth of uh, road projects. Uh, 
sort of at once. Um, it wasn't completely finished, but that had to do with uh, some bidding issues with last year. On January 8th, 2019, the Public Works Committee um, gave policy guidance to the Town Council to add $1.5 million annually for collector roads and longer streets. In addition to the $2.5 million annually for the local roads program, this additional $1.5 million borrowing was first shown in the fiscal year 20 to 24 capital improvement program, which was submitted on January 31st, 2019. Uh, in addition, I'd like to point out that hiring is currently underway for two key management positions in the DPW, and that there's a significant uncertainty of the impacts of COVID-19 in the town's budget. Uh, to proceed, a referral should be made to the Public Works Committee after the hiring of the new DPW superintendent and the new DPW director of administration and finance to develop a recommendation on how to proceed with changes to the local road construction program. So again, this is another good example. Went to the Public Works Committee, recommended adding an additional $1.5 million back in 2000, January 2019. The council voted to accept that recommendation. And then in January 31st, 2019, the manager added that extra $1.5 million into the capital improvement program, not so much the operating program, but the capital improvement program. So um, my recommendation would be um, that's what we should do, uh, the same, same process, but we should probably wait until we have the new DPW superintendent on hand on board uh, because the new superintendent may have some new ideas about what to do or how to do uh, local road construction. So that would be um, my point. Uh, my recommendation would be to refer to the Public Works Committee. Uh, Councillor Kunellis. Thank you. Um, the number one priority from residents townwide is our streets and sidewalks, and, and I certainly concur. So any amount of money that we can appropriate would certainly be welcome because it's it's taxpayer dollars at work and that's how residents actually see their money at work. But I certainly agree with uh, uh, Council Picciarelli that uh, we should be waiting and follow process as we have done in the past. Thank you. Councilor Donato. I agree as well. If I could maybe just make two comments. One, um, I think Part of the reason the road program was so successful uh, this past uh, spring and summer was due to the fact that there are a lot fewer cars on the road. So I'm not sure if we're going to be able to guarantee that success moving forward. So one, um, and then also I agree with you, I think we need to uh, fill those management uh, positions at Public Works. And then I do just want to um, say that um, I know a lot of residents for them, street and sidewalks is you know, one of the priorities, as Council Cunella said. I've got to imagine the town of Watertown spends more on streets and sidewalks than any town of a similar size. And I bet we spend significantly more money than cities and towns that are a lot bigger than us. So I understand. I, I like this idea because to Council Cunella's point, I, I think, you know, if we could do more that would be great, but I do think it needs to go back uh, to Public Works subject to hiring the new staff. But I, I do want to credit Public Works for all the great work they did this past year. And again, just really give a credit to the council and the administration for you know, how many resources we expend to uh, you know, keep the roads and sidewalks in, in good condition. Okay. Great. Um, Okay, uh, Mr. Manager, do you have any comments? Yeah, yeah, Mr. Chairman, members of the council, I, I, a couple of them I would, I, uh, Mr. Chairman, the one thing I do like is to wait, if there's a referral to the Community on Public Works, that it would be with a new superintendent of public works coming on board, uh, that to kind of re, you know, look at again, is there any potential changes for uh, the local road construction uh, program, but I think when we discussed this uh, in years past, the one thing, and, that, and that's why I certainly think it'd be good once we have those two key positions filled to have a discussion with the Committee on Public Works, but I would, the word I would say is capacity. 
and one needs to have that discussion with the new, uh, if you will, management team coming on a public works when that's filled. Uh, I, I would say back to what Councilor Donato alluded to, uh, you know, beginning, and this is a, a shout out to town council, beginning in 2013 through 2025, fiscal year 2025, that the council was either has appropriated, would appropriate almost $48 million over those 13 fiscal years. Those are loan audits. In addition, in addition, within the confines of two and a half, putting dollar amounts that are close to $700,000 a year beginning, uh, you know, 23 fiscal years ago. So there is um, $4 million a year right now, the two and a half million dollars for the streets and sidewalks and the one and a half for the long connector roads. That's a, a very ambitious, but certainly I think it would be appropriate to have additional discussion about any thoughts on the changing the uh, other local road construction program if it was discussed at the Community and Public Works. And I would, uh, I, again, as many of the councils have mentioned, uh, do want to do a shout out to Public Works during this calendar year, the amount of uh, work that's been done, it's, it's, it's very much appreciated by uh, certainly myself and town councilors and many members of the public, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, okay, any councilors wanna weigh in on this? Kenny? Thanks, yeah, not to split hairs too much, but just noting, I don't really care if you refer to public works or not, um, but if this did go there, we wouldn't be increasing their budget by 1.5 million. Um, if we're going to increase the road projects um, by 1.5, it's going to probably be a debt authorization. So, um, you know, the line item for paying down debt would go up, not their budget by 1.5. Not to split hairs, but just so people know, if their budget's 10 million this year and it's 10.5 next year, it's not that we're not moving forward with this. It's that that money's being paid out of our uh, the monies that we've authorized for debt. So, just making that distinction so people are aware. Thank you. Right. Yeah, you're correct. There'll be an additional 1.5 million of borrowing and streets uh, are five-year bonds. So that would be amortized over five years. Um, okay. Um, anybody from the public want to speak to this point? Okay. Uh, seeing no, no, nobody from the public, let's go back to the committee. So, um, do we want to uh, agree to not not add this and instead uh, have it be referred to committee? Uh, so, Councilor Canellis, uh, you're you're on mute. So, okay. Sorry, I agree. Okay, Councilor Donato, I agree, and I agree. Okay, very good. Uh, let's go back. To, so, let's go down to number three. Uh, so number three was from Council Columba. It said hire an additional social service resource specialist via our existing contract with Wayside Youth and Family Support Network. Um, I would like to bundle this with uh, new item number four uh, and new item number 12, because they all seem to be sort of related to social workers. Um, so just, just so people keep that in, in, in mind. So um, I think that uh, expanding the capacity of the health department uh, requires policy guidance from the town council before the manager can include it in the operating budget. Uh, I think we need to uh, uh, have a referral made to the human services committee to work with staff to determine what the unmet need is and then determine if that need, unmet need can be met within the existing department budget or if additional resources are needed. So again, this is, um, you know, we added this position in a, a while ago um, and we, then we increased the hours, but uh, I, I think there needs to be a little bit more discussion with staff, particularly in the health department about what this means and what, what do we, you know, what are we doing? We used to get uh, annual reports from the social service resource specialist about the number of cases that they did and, and the work that they've done as under that uh, contract with Wayside. I, I don't recall seeing that for the last couple of years. I don't know if we stopped doing that. Um, so anyway, that's, that's my thought on that is that, um, 
human service committee needs to sort of weigh in on exactly what the policy, what, what we're hoping to achieve by, by adding additional res, uh, resources in. So uh, Councillor Connells, do you have any thoughts on this? I agree wholeheartedly. Okay, Councillor Giannano, do you have any thoughts on this? I, I, I agree, I, I would hate for us to you know, move forward with a budget priority without um, checking in with Larry Ramden and his staff to see what they would be looking for. And I think without the input from Larry and, and his staff, this doesn't seem like um, it would be the best thing to come out of budget and finance. I would uh, agree to not. Okay, and I, I just point out for, for members of the public. So if you go back to so this one, number four, which is also a Council of Plumber request, expand the capacity of the health department to serve individuals with substance use, I think I should say use disorders and mental health challenges by employing two licensed independent clinical social workers. Um, and then uh, if we just, I think, what would I say, number 12? Councilor Bays put in a request to hire another social service employee in Watertown. So those are all sort of three, in my mind, three different um, versions of the same thing. And I think we, they, they all go together because they're all talking about adding uh, social, social workers. Um, okay, Mr. Manager, do you have any comments? Uh, no, sir. Okay, uh, any counselors wanna speak to this? Kenny? I just think it's really important to stress that this is not the committee saying that the recommendation is a good recommendation or a bad recommendation. It is very simply saying that the council hasn't looked at this yet. Um, we don't have any policy guidance and we can't at this time ask the manager to include something we haven't advised on or looked at at all um, to include in next year's budget. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Any other counselors? Okay, seeing none, uh, any any members of the public wanna speak to this point? Council, oh, sorry, Councilor Feltner. Sorry, it was taking a minute to unmute. No, I was just saying, I appreciate your clarification and letting people know that, um, including with Ken Woodland, that it's not necessarily a bad idea. And um, I agree with the thinking of grouping them uh, together with similar, recommendations. Thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. Yeah, we're not like, again, we're not saying it's, it's a bad idea. We just say it needs more, more, more direction from the council. Um, okay, so anybody from the public want to speak? Oh, before, um, Mr. Chair, I had my hand oh, up. Sorry, sorry, John, I, I can't, uh, if you don't use the, the raise your hand icon, I can't, I can't, I can only see three pictures of people. So I can't. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I should have, I should have uh, followed okay. through on that. Um, yeah, but I, I just wanted to comment. I'm, I'm a, on the uh, Committee on Human Services and I appreciate that um, instead of just saying no, that there's a, a nice um, outcome to refer to the Committee on Human Services so it can get the vetting it does deserve. And I understand the, the role of this committee. I just wanted to thank you for the extra step of referring it to a committee or suggesting it go to another committee. Yeah, yeah, and just again, I, I again, I appreciate that. You know, we never say no to anything. We do provide a, a roadmap on how to make it successful. <laughs> I think that's that's I think the, the, our approach. Um, um, okay, so let's go back to the committee. Uh, Jennifer Smith, you had your yes. Sorry, um, I, I'm confused I'm, I'm new to this process so I appreciate the um, you know the information the explanatory information you've you've provided but I, I am confused about why um, members of the town council would be um, putting these items in um, if they knew about the process I mean doesn't that suggest that the process is so confusing that even members of the town council don't understand how to, I mean, it, I mean, I'm, I'm confused, but uh, I guess I'm even more confused about why, why these items are here if they're not supposed to be here. Jennifer, that's the question of the year. Great <laughs> question. No, 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 remember what I said about no, no, no interruption. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I think we should so give an award. So, so that, first of all, that is a great question, as, as Kenny pointed out. 
a, a lot of this, and most counselors use this process that we'll do here is to sort of just, uh, it gives it extra visibility. Um, it signals to the public what they're, what's important to them. Um, and, you know, it, it's a lot of these things are complicated and you know, require a lot of work and a lot of policy guidance to be developed. Um, so this is a good starting point. And, and it really sort of, um, you know, the first time something comes up, th this, this is a great way to get it up on the board. You know, even though it's gonna take um, maybe uh, six months, a year, sometimes two to three years to actually develop the policy so, so I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't discount, you know, counselors like putting stuff on this list. Sometimes it's just, it's just a great way to have the, 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 the initial discussion about what we should do, what we should do, see if it gets traction, see if it doesn't. And, and I think it's, it's sort of a, a, a low impact way of do of doing that. And, and it's, it's, it's good public discussion. You know, that's just, I guess, my perspective. Um, and it's healthy, it's healthy to have this discussion. Um, and things, you know, I, I will just point out, there's not enough dollars in the budget. There's not enough hours in the week to do everything. So at some point we need to prioritize what's important. And this process is a good way to sort of prioritize what, you know, what, what can we, what we can achieve. Cause, cause we can't, it doesn't do good to have, have a priority list and there's a hundred items on it because nobody can have a hundred priorities, you know, so we need, our job is to try to boil it down into things that we can actually accomplish. So. That, that's helpful, thank you. Um, and I didn't mean to suggest that these counselors didn't know what they were doing. I just suspected there was some strategy in play that I was um, confused about. Uh, I just wanted to say one more thing that as a mental health practitioner and a former school psychologist for the Watertown Middle School, that if you were to put an, an item in the budget that gave uh, Wayfair a, um, the money to hire a, a social worker or the town that they would, they wouldn't need to talk about it. They would just hire the person. So uh, that's something to think about. Um, the middle school didn't have a social full-time social worker um, for most of the time I was there and it was um, someone who was desperately needed. So ju just my two cents. Okay. And, and I do want to just point out that um, the, and this was in some of the emails we received just so, so everyone knows is the, the town council has no authority over policies or the budgeting in, in the school department. That is uh, sort of under the purview of the um, school committee. So, um, okay, so uh, let's, are we ready to go back to the committee? Um, okay, so that, so the, the recommendation of the committee would be to uh, refer this to the Human Services Committee to determine um, policy. Um, are we ready? So Councilor Canellis? I agree. Uh, Councilor Donato? I, I agree. And then just after you vote, Vinny, I just have a procedural question if you could clear it. Sure, okay. So go ahead. So just for counselors who are on this call with who may have made um, some suggestions that we are saying should be referred. When this report goes to the full council, are those gonna be action items or will those individual counselors need to, uh, subject to council rules, bring forward those referrals? Yeah, on their own? Sub subject, to, uh, subject to, I wanna say it's uh, rule 11.8 or something. I don't have it in front of me, but um, that's, yeah, they, they make the referral in for the, for the council rules. Thank you. Penny, did you want to weigh in on that? Yeah, I think they only have to do follow that procedure if it's going to be an item under new business, um, presumably because they will have seen this report in preparation for the meeting, and this is an action item from the report. It might not, I don't think it needs to go through that normal process. I mean, the, the point of that the initial process is to make sure that um, counselors, when they're reviewing the agenda, have the ability to uh, see the details of referrals before uh, we are asked to take a vote on them. But in this case, I don't think it applies because it's not in that new business section of the agenda. I think you, you know, can do it right from the committee. We, we could do it from the committee. We've done that in past years. Yeah. You know, sometimes, you know, I don't, I don't want to presume what other committee chairs want, want to do, but, but we could certainly make that recommendation as part of an action item to vote on the committee report. 
I, I just think it, it's good to maybe set a, a roadmap for just so people know what's going to happen with regard to these ideas we think should be referred after this. So everybody's on the same page. Uh, yeah, I think that actually that's a great idea. So Councilor Feltner, did you want to weigh in on that? Thank you. Yes, I really appreciate Anthony's question, but I'm sorry, I'm a little confused with the discussion and what Ken was saying. Could you just clarify again if you think this thing should then follow up and come under new business or be an action item or just acknowledge that there could be a referral or? We, we could do it a number of ways. I think what Councilor Donato is suggesting is that when we do the committee report uh, to bring forward this budget party guidelines for a vote as an action item on the agenda, we could also have additional action items for each referral that we're recommending to do so that the, we could vote on, the, the council could vote on them at that point to make the referrals, which I think is a good idea. So I, I think it makes it cleaner and smoother and lets the public know that, you know, we're actually moving forward with these. Yeah, great, great idea. Okay. Thank you. All right, let's, uh, let's move on um, to number four, new item number four. We just discussed this expand the capacity of the health department to serve individuals with substance use disorders and mental health challenges by employing two licensed independent clinical social workers. So this one um, would be, we just included this in, in number three. So this would be uh, do not add. Uh, Councilor Canellis, do you agree? Yes, I do. And we're also going to include number 12. Is that correct? Uh, and that's also, yes, and also number 12. So number 12 uh, would be, uh, would you, well, let, let's, let's take them up one at a time because we gotta, we gotta record roll call All votes. Right. So, uh, so, do, so number four, do not add, Council Canal says yes, Council Donato. Yes. I'm um, yes. Let's skip ahead to, um, just gonna scroll up here to number 12. Uh, same thing here in number 12, um, the recommendation we do not add because we've included this in the referral for, for number three. Um, Council Canellis, do you agree? I do. Council Donato, do you agree? Yes. And I agree, so that takes care of that. All right, perfect. Let's go on to number five. Um, this was from Council of Plumba, engage a consultant, working with the personnel department to conduct a study and provide recommendations on how the town can increase the number of people of color hired at all levels of town government. And I do wanna just, for, for the people at home uh, in the audience is these requests, the only order that they're in is the order that I received them when they were sent to me by individual counselors so that there's no, don't, don't, don't assign any ranking or priority to the order that they're in. It's just, it just happens to be the way that, that I received them when I was keeping my running list. So, uh, so this, I would like to point out that this is also included in Council of Bay's new items number 13, 14, and 15. I think these are all related. Uh, if we look over here at 13, 14, and 15, uh, Caroline Bays has uh, allocate, number 13, allocate funding for an internal restorative justice program. Uh, number 14 is hire a racial diversity specialist to train all time employees. And then number 15 is fund an independent report for town government to look at structural and systemic racism within Watertown government, including hiring and promotion of people of color, provide proposals on how to address the issue. So first of all, before we start the discussion, I. Uh, number five, I just want the committee to feel, should we, does it make sense to sort of bundle all, all four of these together since they all seem to be related to the same issue? Yes, Council, I agree. Council Donato, do you agree? I, I agree. Um, okay, so, um, so I would point out that uh, the issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion and how to address them within Watertown government requires, again, policy guidance from the town council before the manager can include it in the operating budget. Uh, I believe we should make a referral to the personnel and town organization committee 
to work with staff to determine what the unmet need is, and then determine if that unmet need can be met within the existing departmental budget or if additional resources are needed. So again, th there's a lot here. This has become, um, this has sort of risen to the surface this year as a, as a, as a new issue that needs to be addressed with some urgency. Um, I don't really know what we need to do or, or how we need to do it. Uh, I'm not a human resources, resources uh, professional. Uh, so I, I think this really needs to be worked out through the, and I think personnel and town organization is, is, the, is the right organization because this is really at the, at the end of the line. It really is a sort of a, a personnel matter. So that's my thoughts. Um, Councillor Cornelis, do you have any thoughts on this? No, I certainly agree. Okay, Councillor Donato. I agree with uh, all of your comments, Council Petrelli. I think this okay, bundle thank should be referred to PPA. Um, uh, Mr. Manager, did you have any comments on this? No, sir. Okay. Uh, any councilors? I see Claire Bunn has her hand up. I'll get you in a, in a moment. Just want to see if any of the councilors have any comments on this. Particularly yes, Councilor uh, Bays, who this is, you know, three of these items she brought forward. Um, sure, I can. I, I just want to say I actually think that's quite appropriate. And as chair of the Personnel and Town Organization Committee, I'm very excited about the idea of addressing these issues. Good. I, I knew you would be. So <laughs> thank you for that. And, All right, Mr. Chair, it's John Gannon. Oh, sorry, John. I, I, sorry, I can't. I can't see your picture. So, but go ahead. Yeah, I can't. I'm sorry. Um, so, with respect to the process to describe what's what's going to happen. So. My understanding is that this committee is going to make a recommendation to the full council that these items will be referred to the respective committees that you've identified as the appropriate um, committees. And then those committees will have further hearings to flesh out the issues that have been pointed out. Is that, is that correct, Mr. Chair? A absolutely. And, 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 you know, it's, you know, and just so the members of the public know that we've got, uh, help me here, uh, I want to say maybe 10 standing committees uh, that are sort of the subject matter experts, um, 10 or 11, I, I think we just created a new one on, on parks and recreation. And, and they, they really, you know, you know the whole, uh, and this goes back to Maddie Rockland's earlier question. The, the, the real issue is that, you know, sometimes these, these, these are complicated matters that require much discussion sometimes hundreds of hours of discussion to, to actually formulate a policy and, and what the problem is and how we're going to address it. And, and the committee, the real hard work of developing policy comes out of the, these committees. And uh, as you know, it's so like this one, you know, this is really a personnel and town, orga town organization matter because it's, it has to do with personnel hiring um, and how we, we deal with, uh, with employees. So, uh, I think I think it's it's a it's a good way good way to do that. So, uh, John, so I, I I appreciate that. No, and and Vinny, thank you for um, for providing that elaboration because a lot of folks are very energized about these issues and they're you know new to the process as well. So, it's very helpful to point out where the next step rather than this is going to go on some in some file cabinet or that won't see the light of day. And it sounds like. Um, this committee will recommend to the full council that the uh, respective committees take up each of these issues. And then these issues will be subject to the usual robust um, discussion within the committee. So thank you again for pointing that out. Okay. Uh, I think, uh, Kenny, you had your hand up and then uh, uh, Lisa, Lisa Feltner. Yeah, just gonna add on top of what uh, John had mentioned that um, that's the process we're gonna take out of committee where you make the recommendation to refer this to the appropriate committee but it's also important to know that um, any of these issues can be referred to committee at any time. And they could have been referred to the committee at any time. Um, and that's something that any of the counselors can do that follow some very basic steps um, at any of our meetings. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, Council Feltner, did you wanna add in something to that? Um, 
Hi, yeah, no, I just, when you mentioned that this was a new issue, uh, I guess just a question, is this along the line, lines of um, thinking of a human rights commission? I know a lot of other towns have that when they say diversity or um, I think you said both Caroline and Tony came from, I'm sorry, the, the quality is so bad. I can't, can't read the, the guidelines I don't have in front of me, but just a, a, gen, a question, I guess Caroline's on if she wants to speak to that, if not, fine. Well, well I, I think, yeah, well, well, we are, Tony was hire a consultant to conduct a study on the number of people of color hired. Counselor Bayes said uh, internal restorative justice program, you know, which I know the police departments agreed to do that externally, but that would be internally. A racial diversity specialist to train town employees um, and fund a report of uh, looking at uh, race, systemic racism within the wartown government. Um, okay, I mean, so it's several, several, it's several things. Curious. Sorry to take the time on no, that. No, and, and it's, you know, it, it, it's, this is going to be complicated. I, I don't yeah. even know where to begin, but I trust the expertise on the personnel and town organization for me to actually unpack this and, and come up with some, some actionable uh, items that, that the council can move forward with. Okay, so uh, so okay, so now let's go to the public. I see uh, Claire Bunn had her hand up. Go ahead. Um, Hi, um, I'm just wondering how many um, or do any of the committees that these um, uh, like these proposals are being referred to have open meetings like this, and do those meetings have a public comment section? Uh, all, all, all the meetings of the town council and committees are open to by, by law, are open to the public. Um, and they have to be posted agendas. If you sign up for Notify Me, you'll be able to get, uh, for the town council, you'll be able to get email notifications when a meeting's scheduled. Um, there's always has to be uh, minutes written. And, uh, and while I will just say this, you know, it, these are not public hearings where the public has a right to speak. But every counselor who chairs a meeting and runs it always allows members of the public to participate. Um, and it's sort of informal, like we're doing here. It's, it's uh, if you go to a town council meeting, it's very formalized when the public can speak and, uh, and, and when the legislative action takes place. Committee meetings are a little more freewheeling, as you can see, these tend to be a little more freewheeling. And, and the members of the public, you know, participate almost as, as equals with the counselors. So, so it's a really good way to, to kind of get input. And we also have, we would also then have like staff members, department heads come and they, they would be part of the discussion too, because ultimately they're the ones who are gonna have to carry out the policy. So, so it's really important to get their buy-in and their ideas about what's gonna work and what's not. So Caroline, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to add to that. Um, the one problem is, well, first of all, I, I wanted to second the thing about the staff. We could not do it without the staff. So, you, you know, because they really do have a lot of the expertise. But I wanted to say in terms of it being open to the public, which of course it is, the, the unfortunate thing is you have to find the information. It is not pushed out to you. So, um, um, especially for these meetings in particular, but for a lot of the meetings, I try to send out an email saying what's coming up. So it's, feel free to contact me and say you want to be on my email list, and then you will. I'll be sending out not, you know notifying you when that's going to happen. So good point. Good point. Councilor Donato, you had your hand up. Uh, yes, Council Pacharelli. I just wanted to. There was some discussion in the chat room. Uh, from various uh, members of the public who are um, expressing support for these referrals. And then a question with regard to, can we refer them now? And I think just to clarify again for people, what's gonna happen is there will be a committee report generated by this committee that will go for the, uh, in front of the full council. Uh, and there will be several referrals uh, as action items that the full council will then vote on. So. These referrals, uh, as mentioned uh, previously, will be included in the committee report that's generated by uh, this. Yeah, good point. And that'll be the, uh, the November 24th town council meeting. So, so make sure you, you look for that agenda and, and the, the full report of this committee will be attached to that. 
All right, um, let's, are we ready to move back to um, take a vote on this one, number new number five? Um, so it's gonna be referred to uh, this one, number five, 13, 14, 50, issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion referred to the uh, Personnel and Town Organization Committee. Uh, Councilor Canellis, do you agree? Um, you may be muted. Sorry, I agree. Okay, Councilor Donato, do you agree? I agree. Okay, and I agree too. Uh, let, let's move down, uh, let's, while we're at it, let's also, since uh, we're killing four birds with one stone here, maybe that's not a good analogy. But, um, so number 13, um, would uh, agree to to uh, not add as that would be part of the referral of number five above. Council Agreed. Donato, do you agree? Council Donato, do you agree? I agree. Okay. Number 14, uh, this would be included with the referral of number five above, so we will not add. Council Canellis, do you agree? Agree. Uh, Councilor Donato, do you agree? I agree. And I agree. And then new number 15, uh, uh, would also be included at the referral with number five above, so we will not add. Uh, Council Canellis, do you agree? Agree. Council Donato, do you agree? I agree. Okay, and um, I agree. Have you heard on that, Mr. Chair? So, so, uh, sorry, uh, John, what did you say? Um, was this number 16? That was number 15. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. My bad. Uh, which Number 15, which is the... the Wait, what's going on here? Uh, number 15, uh, the independent, this one right here, the independent report for town government. 16 is, is about the multi-use path, which we'll get to in a little, in a little bit. Um, all right, so now we're back to new item number six. Excuse me, Vinny, Vinny if I could cut in just for a second. There's some more uh, questions popping up in the chat about when these referrals will be going before the committee. And just to reiterate uh, what you said a, a few minutes earlier that this report will be presented to the town council at the November 24th hearing and that these referrals will be included in the committee report. Uh, residents of the public who are asking that. Right, so so make sure, you know, if you're interested in this stuff um, that you uh, look at that agenda for the November 24th um, town council meeting. Um, and if, of course, and if anybody ever has any questions about stuff, you could, you could email me or any of the other counselors directly um, for clarification. Uh, so, okay, let's look, let's go back here to new item number six. Uh, Councilor Feltner uh, said, continue to support for review and implementation of the anticipated townwide bicycle and pedestrian plan. So this, uh, this was actually just referred, the draft plan was just referred to the Joint Public Works and Economic Development Planning Committee to review and develop uh, policy guidance for the town council to approve. Um, any recommendations brought forward by the plan I think Vinny's frozen again. Yeah, frozen Vinny. To recover a lot more quickly last time than he did last week. At this so point, um, there we go. Okay, we cut out for a second there, Ben. Okay, no, okay. My internet connection is unstable. That it's that that same old message. So anyway, so this is um, uh, I, I think it's this is a little premature um, because we don't know what's going to go in the capital improvement program, what may go in departmental budgets because the council hasn't had the committee meetings yet to, to develop its policy guidance on how to move forward with this. So I would recommend that we don't um, add this at this point and we wait and see if there's any uh, implementation costs, uh, if any, that, that come out of this. So um, Councilor Canellis, do you have any thoughts on this? Uh, this is a work in progress. So it's, uh, I think, uh, wait and see. Okay. Uh, Councilor Donato. 
I, I agree with uh, both uh, you, Mr. Chairman, as well as Council Kamel. Okay, I'm gonna open up to um, uh, Mr. Manager. Did you have any comments on this? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, any councils, Councilor Feltner? Thanks, yes, I know it, it's on, uh, you know, we're already in the middle of it. And so, but I was just trying to be proactive and have it be on the front burner. And I thought it would hit for that, this, you know, upcoming fiscal year. Um, so I thought that's why I, I see it as a continuation. I wasn't thinking it was a new thing, but I guess it's new because we haven't voted on the plan yet in, in terms of a budget item. So you're saying this would be something that would come up through the year, but not now because we haven't voted on the plan. Uh, well, uh, we have well, we haven't voted on the, the plan. The plan's draft. It has you know we haven't had any meetings to discuss it. Um, it's not you know there's a lot of stuff in there. Uh, some stuff is you know policy decisions that wouldn't cost money. Some things may be legislative uh, matters that would have to be taken up uh, you know again not through the the budget or through the executive branch. Uh, some things may be uh, for. Um, Things that go in the capital improvement program. So, you know, there's a, but we, we haven't made any recommendations on, on any of the implementation plans yet. So we don't, you know, so to ask the manager to put money in the budget for this when we haven't even decided, you know, what actually we're going to do is I think a, a little premature. Okay. Yeah. I just, I just didn't want it to fall off, um, get, you know, priorities. So, well, well, well it's definitely not because, um, we're going to have meetings and we're going to do a committee report and that committee report is going to have specific recommendations and then those recommendations will take up when they're presented to the council. So, so it's definitely not going to, it's that this is not going to fall off the, the, off the radar screen. So I guess it's, it's more kind of a question. Do we ever, do we ever do placeholders or we just come back potentially with amendments or wait and see how it plays out time-wise so that the public when we all kind of keep a rolling rolling list, if you will? Um, well, it, 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 it depends. It depends how, how urgent, you know, we've certainly added things in at the last minute because they're urgent um, or it just follows the, the normal budget process, you know. Uh, but this, this is something that, you know, is this is the first time, you know, the, you know, the plan, if this plan had been done and we'd, you know, made some recommendations on an implementation plan like okay. we did with the parking, you know, it, it just, you know, sometimes it just takes. You're you wanting know, more, wait till we get more specific. Yeah, yeah, it, it needs to really be specific. Yeah, you know. okay. Okay, uh, any members of the public want to speak to this? Uh, okay, seeing none. Um, all right, so let's go back to the committee. So let's, uh, so we read. We're not going to add it at this time. Uh, Councillor Cunellis, do you agree? I agree. Councillor Donato, do you agree? I agree. Okay, and I agree. All right, let's move on to number seven. Uh, Councillor Feltner again, uh, number seven, uh, explore ways to reduce trash costs, including increasing recycling, including access to the recycling center, public organic waste composting, and the like. So uh, again, this was similar to the number one about the recycling coordinator. So this is already um, included in two, goal 2C two when we added in the comply with mass DEP solid, 2030 solid waste management plan. And just so members of the public know, that plan by mass DEP says that we need to reduce our municipal solid waste by 30% between 2020 and 2030. Um, we're currently sending to the incinerator 10,000 10, tons a year of, of garbage. Uh, so we need to reduce that by 30% uh, or 3,000 tons a year. Uh, we've already had the first committee meeting, uh, a public works committee meeting to uh, discuss this. Uh, and this is an active referral in front of the public works committee. And we are in the process of developing policy guidance for the town council to approve. So 
Um, so since this is still in front of the Public Works Committee for policy guidance, I don't think it's, you know, whatever recommendations come out of that, uh, particularly, you know, a pilot program for organic waste uh, recycling is something that the, the committee will take up when the, the recommendations come out of that uh, committee report. So I would, I would say it's, it's premature to add this at this time. Uh, let, let's wait and see what the committee recommendation is. Council Canales, do you have any thoughts on this? Uh, conversations are ongoing. Okay, Councilor Donato. I agree with uh, all the previously made comments. Um, Mr. Manager, did you have any comments on this one? Uh, no, sir. Uh, any counselors want to uh, comment on this? Well, again, I did. I didn't think of this as a new thing because, you, as you said, I guess it's just different wording with the mass DOP, et cetera, because we've been acknowledging for a while that we have too much, way too much trash and it's an ongoing thing. So I just didn't want it to fall off. It's, it's definitely not because we are, we are meeting, uh, we, have, we have a very aggressive uh, plan in place with the Public Works Committee to, uh, to meet this uh, 2030 goal of 30% reduction. And it just, and just to the members of the public listening, that's a lot of garbage. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, it's gonna take a lot of work in order for us to hit that target, but I'm very optimistic that we can. Um, and I think it's very exciting that um, that we can move forward with, with some of these things. And I think there's a lot of excitement about doing a curbside uh, food waste pickup. Um, so, um, and again, if any members of the public want to come to those public works committee meetings, you, you know, talk about this, this is, this would be another great way to get involved. So I'm, I'm really excited about this. I could talk about garbage for four hours, but I won't do that. Um, so, uh, okay. Thank you, Councillor uh, Feldman. Does anybody, member, any members of the public like to speak to this point? Okay, seeing none, let's go back to the committee. So uh, let's wait until uh, policy guidance comes from the town council. So we would not be adding this um, at this time. Councilor Canellis. I agree. Councilor Donato. I agree. And I agree. Was there anybody in any of the chat? Are we getting any chats from any of these or no? Um, not, nothing specific to these items, more just general uh, information that uh, some of the other counselors on the chat are, are filling in some uh, information for members of the public, but nothing specific to any of these. Okay, good. All right, let's move on to number nine, uh, again from Councillor Feltner. Um, number, sorry, number eight. Uh, continue to enhance the capabilities of the senior center to strengthen the programming directed at seniors. Um, last year, we removed this item from the list because we had hired uh, some new positions. So, uh, so we removed this from the list in fiscal year 20. Um, and I think at this point, um, since we, we did remove it as sort of essentially being complete, um, I'm not comfortable with, with adding it in again without any kind of specifics. So that's my thought. Councilor Canellis, do you have any thoughts on this? I agree. Councilor Donato, do you have any thoughts? I agree. Mr. Dressel, did you have any comments on this one? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Um, any counselors want to weigh in this, Lisa? Subsidized. Uh, no, thank you. Okay. I'll save for a future. Okay. All right, so let's go back. Uh, any members of the public want to speak to this one? Okay, seeing none, let's go back to the committee. So, uh, so uh, would be uh, do not add uh, Councilor Canellis. Do you agree? I agree. Council Donato, do you agree? I agree. Okay, and I agree too. Um, 
Okay, let's move on to number nine uh, from Council of Feltner. Continue to pursue funding opportunities to support law enforcement and public safety, including in conjunction with public health and mental um, wellness issues. Um, I, I'd like to point out that um, this is really sort of included uh, funding opportunities is in 1C above about uh, grant programs. Uh, so I think because this is already included in 1C, I don't, I don't, is, is a funding, a revenue item. I don't think that this actually belongs here in a um, expense item. So. Related um, question, Mr. Chair? Sure, John. No, and I support uh, you know, the administration's pursuit of funding opportunities for this and any other purpose. But um, I wondered if, um, well, I'll step back. Um, a number of the communities I worked uh, for as, as a municipal attorney, they had their, someone whose responsibility across all departments was to pursue grants, either part-time position, um, full-time position for the larger cities I worked with. Does Watertown, does each development, I'm sorry, each department, do they pursue grants or is there some, maybe a question for the town manager, is there some expert on grant pursuit um, who works with the town in any capacity or is it just department by department? Uh, I'll let the, the manager sort of address that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the Council of Gannon's uh, query, it is, it, you know, it is, uh, specifically driven by the individual department where he or she would be uh, monitoring items that could be considered uh, not only the ongoing budget policy guidelines to pursue grants, but then also item 1C. So, but, it, but we don't have a, any position that's a grants, uh, you know, specifically related to pursuing grants townwide. We don't, we don't have that position in the, uh, in the budget today. Um, follow up to that, Mr. Chair. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've I've seen grant um, professionals um, yield many times over their salaries uh, based upon the unique grants that they were able to pursue. Um, yeah, and a lot of departments don't have the um, they're strapped enough with their own meeting their own needs, uh, their their own department's needs to look beyond um, funding. So. I would like to just throw that out as an idea, something not before the, this committee, but as an idea to think about um, looking into the possibility of, you know, um, hiring a grant part-time or so, a grant person whose job is to be the, the grant coordinator for the town. I mean, because I've seen nothing but success in, in these types of roles. Okay. Um, anybody else uh, from the council want to weigh in on this? Um, okay. If that anybody from the public want to weigh in on this? Okay. Seeing none. All right. Let's come back to um, the committee. So. Uh, so the recommendation is this is already included in 1C above, so do not add. Councilor Canellas, do you agree? I agree. Councilor Donato, do you agree? I agree. Okay, and I agree also. So that's, um, okay, let's see, where are we now? So now we're at an item number 10. Um, I would add 10 and 11 seem to be the same thing, but was, uh, I would like to maybe take both of these up together. Uh, so uh, Councilor Feltner said in anticipation of town council deliberations include consideration of a debt authorization for the water enterprise fund is needed. And then number 11 was Councilor Donato said appropriate funds to the water and sewer fund enterprise to offset potential rate increases in fiscal year 22. 
So uh, we did make a referral uh, when we voted the, the water rates um, uh, this year that to make, make a referral budget fiscal oversight committee, this committee, <laughs> uh, to review the water and sewer rate study and develop policy guidance for the town council to approve. So this, we haven't had our first meeting yet. Uh, we wanted to come up with some uh, plans to mitigate the uh, the, the rate increases, uh, but the actual, I, I would put both of these as sort of premature because we don't actually know what the policy recommendation is going to be. It may include these, it may not, but at this, this point, I think it's too early to tell. So it would be my recommendation that not add these and instead have that the committee recommendation come forward with what specific thing uh, we should do. So that's my thought on 10 and 11. Uh, I'm gonna ask Council Canellis your, your thoughts on this. Ongoing conversation. You know, once we get into it, I'm sure that we'll have uh, input from others as well. Okay, Council Donato. Uh, you know, Council Pichirelli, I, I was fully expecting this result. In fact, when I was typing it up, I could picture Councilor Woodland in my mind shaking his head. Telling me I wasn't going through the correct uh, process. But, uh, you know, to your point earlier, I think it's definitely something that, you know, I just want to make sure is kind of on the forefront of uh, counselors' minds. I think residents expect real estate taxes to go up every year. They may not like it, but I think they understand it's going to happen. And I find that the uh, reaction to water and sewer rate increases is much more um, I understand this is subject to an outstanding uh, referral, and I'm happy for it to be taken up at, at that time. But again, to your point, I just want to make sure it's out there and on people's minds. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Manager, uh, uh, did you have no any comments? No comments, sir. Okay. All right, let's go to the counselors. Um, Councilor Woodland. Uh, thanks. Not to split hairs or anything, but it, it would make sense if you were looking to reduce the rate in your water sewer enterprise fund that you could appropriate monies into that into that fund for that fiscal year. Um, I, I'm struggling to see in what case we would authorize debt. Um, we wouldn't be able to borrow for the purpose of subsidizing the enterprise fund unless that that authorization is about something to do with capital. But just, I don't want to be splitting hairs, but just making it clear that the it'd be an appropriation that would reduce that rate. Um, it wouldn't be a debt authorization. Right, thank you. Uh, Councilor Feltner. Good morning. Um, we're losing you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm laughing because like Anthony, I, I, I hesitate to put this in, but I um, and know that the referral is going to be before the, the committee, but uh, and um, there is crossover between capital and operating expenses there in, in this issue. So uh, just, uh, you know, food for thought. Thank no, you. No, no, this was a hot topic with that 8.6% rate increase um, that got everybody's attention. So we, we need to do something. Um, I don't know what it is yet, but we will we'll have to figure out uh, all the pieces of this and come up with, it's probably gonna be multiple recommendations, not just one thing. These complicated problems is usually not one solution. They're complicated because you need to do multiple things. Um, all right, I'd like to turn it over, uh, see if any members of the public would like to speak on this one. Okay, seeing none, um, let's go back to the committee. So uh, number 10, uh, the, uh, don't add this because it's an active referral. Uh, Council Canellis, do you agree? I agree. Council Donato, do you agree? I agree. Okay, good. Let's go down to number 11. So we just, same thing. So we're not gonna add number 11. Uh, Councilor Canellis, do you agree? Agreed. Councilor Donato, do you agree? I agree. Okay, and I agree too. 
All right, so this brings us, let's uh, go down. We're down now at number 16. Um, so this was from Council Gannon. Uh, de uh, develop a preliminary design plan for the conversion of, to a multi-use path, multi path, which would serve as a connection to Linear Park of the former Boston and Maine Railroad section between Main Street and Howard Street. Remove construction equipment and debris that are not consistent with allowed uses outlined in the Watertown zoning ordinance requirements for the area. So we, we actually touched on this a little bit um, last Monday. So this is sort of already included in 2M, which is the acquisition of uh, new DPW staging space. Uh, the problem is that this land where the railroad used to be um, is currently being used as a DPW staging area for contractors. So we have made a priority of, in order to do this, uh, we need to actually move the, D the DPW staging. So this is already included in 2M. May I be heard on, on this issue, Mr. Chair? Yeah, yeah, let me, if I could just finish, I got just a couple more notes I wrote to myself here. So, so the preliminary design uh, is in the public works committee report that was approved by the town council on March 25th, 2008. Uh, the funds for the construction of the path were part of the mitigation by the Criterion Riverbend project and are currently being held in escrow pending the start of construction. So um, this has been going on for a long time. Um, I'm glad you put it on here because I think, you know, what this points out is that we really need to schedule a public works committee meeting to find out exactly where we are with the finalization of the design because it was going to have uh, parking spaces, uh, uh, two parking lots at either end and uh, a path along uh, the Cambridge water main with an easement that the city of Cambridge grant granted us to put a path on top of. So at this point, it's um, it's depend the final construction here, I believe, is dependent upon the moving of the staging area, the acquisition of land for the staging may area. May I be heard on that, Mr. Chair? What's that? May I be heard? Maybe may I be heard on the the staging? Sure. Area. Yep. Go ahead, John. So. Um, Generally, uh, construction contracts require the lands, the persons performing the contract to arrange with a private party to have space for the temporary staging of construction equipment. I mean, I grew up in this neighborhood. It was always a dumping ground after I, I, I wasn't old enough when the railroad tracks were there, but um, literally it was a midnight dumping ground. And then um, um, it was probably in the early 1980s, the, um, the, what used to be this large hole, this large trench was fill, filled to, um, to grade. Um, but unfortunately, instead of it becoming a park then, um, con it became a contractor yard. There's not just trucks not owned by the town, there's construction debris, piles of various materials. So, um, it's, it should be a park. It, it um, has been a dumping ground literally for the 50 years I've been playing in that area. Well, way back when, not, not, it's been a long time. But the, um, it's, it's ripe for um, conversion to a, a really nice park. And I, did you say, Mr. Chair, that the preliminary design plan had already been constructed, had already been drafted? Yeah, uh, and uh, we did this back in 2008. Okay. So the, the plan, I can get this, I can get, you know, fill you in. I know, I know, you know, this is your first year on the council, so there's a lot of stuff, but we, we actually did this. Um, it was Councillor Falkoff, Councillor Corbett, and I were on the Public Works Committee in 2008, and we came up with the extending the linear path uh, from which goes, you know, beyond uh, Moxley Park across. Main Street, down along the Cambridge Water Main, connecting up to the, if you go on Howard Street in front of the new Criterion Riverbend building, uh, they put sort of a, a cycle track on the sidewalk, which will then cross Pleasant Street and connect up with the, uh, the path. So, so this, is, this is the goal that you'll be able to ride from Fresh Pond um, all the way down the Wartown Greenway to, to School Street, get on the community path, 
bring that all the way down to, to, uh, the, to the Charles River um, at Howard Street. So, so this is a long-term plan we came up with in 2008. Uh, there's just a lot of things. And, and the biggest, I understand, and maybe the manager or Mr. Magoon would want to speak about the staging land. Uh, generally speaking, the uh, contractors who are doing road work for us in the, our annual road project, um, they, uh, they need a local place to do staging for material. And uh, it's, it's our responsibility to either provide them for that or they're going to, if they have to go out and, and commercially um, rent some space, uh, it's going to be extra cost to us. So it's really, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of stuck here. That, that, um, just Mr. Chair, so it was probably meant to be a temporary thing, like, well, we have this one project, well, let's store the, the equipment on this, what could be the linear path. And it's like bureaucratic lethargy 40 years later, the same use has been ongoing it's not consistent with the Watertown zoning uh, um, map for that area. It does not allow for construction yard. So um, it's parkland, it's open space. So um, I, I applaud any efforts that council can do to speed up what will be a gem for the, uh, to connect from the Charles River all the way to, as you stated, to Fresh Pond and, and beyond because it goes into some of all which is constructing its end. The Minuteman path is constructing additional expansion elements as well as the Mystic River uh, pathways. So this will be part of a, of a crowning jewel of accessibility and open space. So I, I just, um, I'll withdraw the, um, the request for a preliminary design plan since it's already in place, but I would urge my colleagues to make this more of a priority. And, and you noted that there is funding available um, through a linkage, linkage fund from one of the local projects available. So I say I'll steam ahead. Yeah, this is, well, you know, I've been waiting since 2008 for this. So it's been, it's been frustrating for me. What I'll do is I, I think part of the, the recommendation is to schedule a public works committee meeting so we can find out exactly the status of this and see if we can't, uh, what we what we need to do to move this forward. I think that would be an important takeaway from this. So. Great, thank you. Um, okay, so uh, I forget where I, I was. So Councilor Canellis, did you have any comments on this? I do not. Uh, Councilor Donato? No comment. Mr. Manager, did you have any comments? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Did uh, Mr. Magoon, is he still here? Did he want to weigh in on that or no? I don't think I need to add anything. Okay, good. Happy to answer any questions. Okay. Um, any uh, any other counselors uh, want to weigh in on this? Okay, seeing none, any members of the public want to weigh in on this? Okay, seeing none. Uh, all right, so the, 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 the action I think would be not to add this and uh, have the Public Works Committee schedule a, a meeting to find the status of moving forward. Um, Councillor Pinellas, do you agree? I agree. Councillor Donato, do you agree? I agree. And I agree. Okay, for, thank you. And thank you, John, for bringing this forward. No, thank you for consideration and committees. Keep it, keep it, uh, yeah. Uh, every every year when we do the capital improvement program, I, I ask the question, and it's always uh, it's uh, it's it's there. It's it's frustrating. Let me tell you. All right, let's move on. To, we got the last one here. Uh, Bureaucratic lethargy. I'm sorry for, for overstepping, but uh, yeah, it's it's been literally used in the same purpose for 40 years, and it's um, you know, it's it's that area of town is no longer the industrial use that it that it formerly was. Yes, that's I agree. All right, uh, last one, new, new item number 17, which is uh, from, also from Council Gannon, says prepare use of COVID compliant remediation measures in all town buildings to ensure safety of town of Watertown personnel and to the general public when opening town buildings to the general public so safety may be guaranteed. Um, I, I just, um, just want to 
point out that I, I think all our COVID-19 measures are currently being implemented in this year, fiscal year 21. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to need to do new COVID compliant uh, measures in fiscal year 22. Um, if I could just maybe, uh, maybe Mr. Manager, just get your thought on that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, perhaps uh, it, with your indulgence, the committee, I'd like to have Mr. Tracy, who's been kind of quarterbacking the uh, uh, the CARES Act and pursuing funding uh, on those matters. Okay, that'd be good. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Manager. Um, Mr. Chairman, um, the town has, um, you know, submitted some reimbursement requests, funding requests for the CARES Act. Um, as you may or may not know, we've already put some steps into place in town hall for um, certain measures, uh, security and health measures for the employees. Um, and we continue to look at that and we will continue to be doing so, um, you know, whether it's regarding some PPE, um, doing some things to the, the town hall um, office doors and offering um, sneeze guards. Um, we're also now, um, and um, sometime this week, we'll be um, actually um, ordering uh, air, purif air purifiers for all the um, different um, rooms in the municipal buildings, um, just like the school department. So we're taking additional measures, and we're also, uh, the personnel department and, and myself, are meeting with the um, uh, um, labor um, people, the union people, um, and listening to what their their concerns that they may have. Okay, so that's so I guess my 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 what I was wondering is um, so this is this is all being done this year. So do you anticipate any additional measures needed to be funded in fiscal year twenty two, or, or are we sort of by the time we get to July next July we're already going to have everything we need in place. That's the hope, sir. Okay. Just a question: We have a, we have some old town buildings uh, in our in our inventory, so I, I just wonder how um, how we can retrofit um, you know the proper air remediation um, and ventilation systems that would be needed for a safe COVID environment. So, whomever can ask that answer that question, I appreciate it. That's something that we would always um, take up with the facilities director, the facilities director and myself um, you know, talking about those air purifiers uh, is, it's just one, um, one measure and she's, um, she and her staff are reviewing uh, anything that we can do. Uh, additionally, I do think that um, going back to um, Councillor um, Picciarelli's comments, that this will be all taken care of um, between fiscal year 20 and fiscal year 21. Hopefully we won't have to do anything um, for fiscal year 22, but if that does, we would um, uh, alert the manager as well as the town council. Yeah, I think I think what Councilor Gannon's maybe referring to, so I wanna, if we could just maybe break this COVID-19 measures, this sort of the operational and sort of temporary stuff um, that we need to do. Which, which we we have to do now. We we're, we're either have already done it or are currently doing it because, you know, the, this is you know we're reopening the buildings. And then I think there's the long term. Um, uh, you know, we, we have in the capital improvement program ongoing uh, maintenance. You know, capital projects for maintaining our current buildings. I think some of these future things as we do capital projects, uh, as we redo bathrooms. Uh, I know this came up in the, in the school buildings. As we renovate bathrooms, um, you know, we may want to advance those and do some new uh, COVID-19 measures as part of those renovation projects. But that's in the, I think that falls into the existing um, capital improvement program of, of sort of those building upgrades. But yeah, in the operating budget, really it's sort of, you know, the, the PPP, the air purifiers or you know, upgrading sort of air filters and that type of stuff. So I, I just think that, you know, we are, um, we can't say we're gonna be doing this, um, you know, next July, we, you know, we, we have to do it this year. So that, that would be my impression. 
And just to clarify, um, maybe to Mr. Tracy, so you, you noted that um, you know, representatives of the town's labor unions are involved, the, um, the building, uh, building department, um, but I'm also assuming the, the health department is involved, the health inspectors are also aware or, or hopefully even directing what needs to be done? No, most definitely the, um, the health director um, has um, definitely weighed in a, a lot as far as what we've already done at town hall. Um, you know, I know it's been a while since the town councilors may have been in town hall, but um, we have an upstairs case, we have a downstairs case, we have all kinds of signage, all the bathrooms are no longer um, public bathrooms with the exception of the handicapped bathroom. Um, we have some very strict signage and limitations as appointments only during early voting, um, people who wanted to transact, do transaction business with the town other than voting had to go to a window. Um, we will be starting to go back to the lower hearing room since uh, the early, that is not needed for early voting anymore. So we try to uh, make sure the citizens who come in to conduct work are basically just uh, entering into the lower hearing room and actually um, leaving, um, going conduct their business and leave through the lower hearing room and they don't even access the, the building. Um, all for the safety um, for the uh, employees of the, of the town who work in the town hall. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm fine with that explanation. Great, thank, thank you, Council Gannon. Um, and I lost track of where it was. I see Councilor Feltner has her hand up. Did you wanna go? Uh, thank you, just real quick. I was thinking the CARES Act, the time said, um, doesn't cover capital expenses. If you could clarify. Council, I, I, I didn't say that it didn't. Yes. Um, handle capital expenses. Um, it, it does not allow for building a building or an addition to a building, those type of capital expenses. However, it does allow us to buy, um, um, you know, laptops, which we are, we're doing. The air purifiers are actually going to be a standalone unit um, in each um, office. So those, you know, I, I really wouldn't constitute an air purifier as a, um, as a capital item because it's it's only five hundred and eighty eight dollars or seven hundred dollars depending on which model we get. Um, but some of the things we have done, you know, cutting the doors in half, putting up um, sneeze guards that I think will be permanent on counters. Um, those items, those are those are capital items. Sure. Okay. Good. Um, I all right. Um, So where did we stand? Did, any, um, did anybody from the public want to uh, weigh in on this? Okay, don't see anybody from the public. Um, all right, so let's bring it back to the committee. So, um, so basically we're, we're instituting all this in fiscal year 21 and um, it doesn't appear there's going to be a need to add anything specifically in uh, fiscal year 22. So the recommendation would be not to add this. Uh, Councillor Nellis, do you agree? Agree. Councillor Donato, do you agree? I agree. And I agree too. All right. Well, that brings us to the end of our list. Um, and I, I think... Um, that's it's already 840. Um, so two things. The um, I know we talked last meeting about we'd gotten the uh, the email from the Sunrise Movement, the uh, Extinction Rebellion, and the Uplift Watertown, and I had said I was going to do a draft uh, reply to that for this committee to review. But since we never we didn't get all the way through the list. Um, last week and a lot of the things we discussed this week need to be in that response. I'd like to push that off till, uh, till uh, next Monday uh, to give me time to sort of take all of today, tonight's um, comments and, and formulate those in, into the reply to those emails. So, um, 
So two things for next Monday uh, would be, uh, I will write up all the notes for, for everything we discussed today uh, for final review by the committee. So that'll be the first thing. And then the second thing is uh, I will draft uh, a review for the, the emails that we've gotten for the committee to review so we could formulate an official response to uh, all the residents who, who uh, took the time to write, to write into us. Does that sound like a good strategy? Yes, I'd like to thank Councillor Picciarelli for undertaking all of these efforts. It's, it's a monumental task, even putting the worksheets together. And I hope that everyone appreciates the time and effort that goes into it. Thank you. Um, thank you, I, I appreciate it. I'm, you know, we, we all work together as a team to make this happen. It's a lot of work, um, but it's a team effort. And I, but I do appreciate your kind words, Councillor Canelo. And Mr. Chair, I also want to echo uh, Councilor Canelo's uh, thanks for your hard work and dedication and, and explaining the process for new folks involved, um, getting involved in Watertown. Welcome, you know, welcome to everyone. And I liked how you facilitated um, instruction and, and, and uh, input as well. So, and, and, and set forth a process by which these actions may go uh, forward in, in a future council meeting. So thank you again. Yeah, no, and it's, I, I do wanna say it's like, you know, and for the members of the public who are still here listening is, you know, one of the hallmarks of this council has been teamwork. And if you go to a lot of cities, you know, there's a lot of backstabbing and one-upsmanship going on in the council. But in Watertown, this town council, it is actually a pleasure working with my colleagues because we do work as a team. We don't always agree on everything, which is, which is fine. But there's a real sense of teamwork here. We, we actually get a lot done because we, we do work together as a team. So I do want to thank all of you, you know, my colleagues, for, for, for your efforts and your cooperation in getting this done. Uh, before we go, um, Anthony, did, was there anything else in the chat that we needed to address? Um, no, there was just a few comments uh, from uh, residents just uh, thanking everybody, all of their efforts. And then also just for the record, as I was the contact person on the agenda, I did not receive any email public uh, during the course of this. Okay. All right. Well, then I think um, I think we're done for tonight. I'm looking forward to uh, having dinner, a, a late <laughs> dinner. <laughs> um, so I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. I that was I'll write that down as a roll call. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, all the members of the public um, who who attended and, and participated. Um, and um, we'll get this done and um, mark your calendars for November twenty fourth, the town council meeting. Good night, all. Good night, all. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Sure.